Okay. All so, right. Good yeah, morning, everybody. Uh, I am calling this meeting of the Commission for Arts and Culture to order. Um, and uh, I'm Janet Petre. I am the chair of the City of San Diego Commission for Arts and Culture. Thanks for joining us. I'd like to ask my colleagues on the commission to keep your video on throughout the meeting to remain as accessible as possible to our audience. And I'd like to ask the same of staff. Now we're gonna do a quick roll call to confirm commissioner attendance. And so when I call your name, please unmute yourself and answer present. <clears throat> Pardon me, uh, Commissioner Frank, Commissioner Blevins, want to unmute yourself and say present. I will come back. Uh, Commissioner Bossler, Commissioner Brown, Commissioner Dezenzo. Yeah. I didn't hear you. Tracy, I can't hear you. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I was having problems. Good morning, everyone. I'm here. Nice. <laughs> All right, great. That's wonderful. Thank you. Commissioner Hughes? Present. Sorry for my tardiness. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Jackson? Present. Thank you. Commissioner Meza? Commissioner Nuana? Commissioner Friedman? Present. Thank you. Commissioner Smith? Present. Thank you. Commissioner Schoenbrunn? Commissioner Whooper? Present. And uh, Commissioner Schoenbrunn, Doreen, do you want to unmute yourself? Walter. Oh, sorry, that's my puppy. Okay, here. Okay, great. Thank you, Doreen. And uh, Commissioner Blevins, I know you're with us. <clears throat> okay, well, thank you. Your attendance has been noted. Uh, also joining us today is city staff, including our executive director, Jonathan Gluss, chief of civic art strategies, Christine Jones, senior public art manager, Chuck Miller, project manager, Bell Reza, and civic art project manager, Laura Bullock. Now I'd like to call on Commissioner Friedman to share our uh, vision. Of, I mean, our purpose and My puppy. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Janet. Um, Bill, I cannot seem to find the statement. I lost it just now. Could you just put it on, on so I can read it? Oh. I was looking for it. I just have the call to order and statement and purpose and vision. So, okay, wh who's that? That's from Janet. Okay, here we go. Let's see if I can just do that thing. We'll make it as efficient as possible. Uh, you... See, is it back? That, well, I can see something, but it's not big enough for me. Exit full screen. Okay, I'll type. Good, thank you. I, I'll just do it. Okay, that's perfect. I make it simple. Um, our vision is expanding our world by celebrating creativity in San Diego. Our purpose: the City of San Diego Commission for Arts and Culture serves in an advisory capacity to the Mayor and City Council on promoting, encouraging, and increasing support for the region's artistic and cultural assets, integrating arts and culture into community life, and showcasing San Diego as an international tourist destination. <clears throat> okay, got that. Next up, before we get down to today's agenda, I'm gonna ask Bell to just go over um, some of the details, logistics, how the meeting will go. Thank you, Chair Poutre. Um, in an effort to provide greater accessibility, members of the public may join the meeting as webinar attendees in order to provide virtual non-agenda and agenda common in real time. Commissioners, city staff, and authorized presenters are attending the meeting as panelists, and the meeting will function for them identically to a typical Zoom meeting. Um, as just a quick refresher, please note the buttons on the control bar at the bottom of your Zoom window. Camera icon to activate your video. Microphone is to mute and unmute. Uh, please do remember to stay muted when you're not talking and to un unmute yourself when you speak. You will also see the chat window button. Please keep your chat window open at all times as you will be using the chat to signal when you'd like to speak and chair will acknowledge requests in order. 
Please refrain from using the meeting chat for anything other than signaling that you'd like to speak in order to comply with Brown Act. Thank you, Chair Poutre. All right, thank you, Bill. Uh, <clears throat> so we have an action item coming up and um, basically uh, the executive committee met and set the agenda for this meeting and it was to include uh, a presentation on the new education cultural complex, but um, scheduling conflicts mean uh, that that's not gonna happen today. So. Um, we need an action. We need an action uh, approved so that we can suspend the rule that says uh, only the executive committee can um, adjust this uh, agenda. Sorry, um, Commissioner Smith. So moved. Thank you. Do we have a second? I second. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Commissioner. Levens, I think that was. All right, great. Um, now, is there any um, discussion on this item? Commissioner Hughes, were you? Uh, oh, I was just trying to second, thank you. Understood, okay. Any uh, discussion on this item? All righty, um, so uh, we have a motion and a second. Uh, I don't see any discussion. So um, before we vote, is there any public comment on this item? Uh, let me check in. For those members of the public in attendance, please click, click the button to raise your hand to indicate that you would like to comment. I will enable you to speak and send you a prompt to unmute yourself in order. When I call your name, please state your name for the record. Um, you will have three minutes to provide comment, after which you will be placed on mute again. Uh, if you're joining via phone, please press star nine to raise your hand. I'll call on you by the last four digits of your phone number. When I call on you, press star six to unmute yourself. Please raise your hand now if you'd like to provide um, comment for this agenda item. I'm seeing none, Chair Boutre. All right, thank you, Bell. Uh, so we will take a vote. I will call your name and you will respond out loud with yay, nay, or abstain. Don't forget to unmute yourself. All right, Commissioner Blevins. Yay. Thank you. Commissioner DeCenzo. Yay. Thank you. Commissioner Hughes. Yay. Thank you. Commissioner Jackson. Yay. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Friedman. Yay. Thank you. Commissioner Smith. Yay. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Schoenbrunn. Yay. Thank you. And Commissioner Whipper. Yay. Yay. All righty. And thank you. And my vote is a yay. So motion carries. Okay, great. Now we're going to move to non-agenda public comment. The public was invited to submit public comment on agenda and non-agenda items via a web form. And that's accessible through the agenda and also the commission's website. Members of the public may also join this meeting as webinar attendees. If members of the public have submitted comments in writing via the web form, staff will read them aloud per city public comment protocol. Uh, I will call on Bell to read aloud any non-agenda public comment or to call on any attendees who would like to provide comment. Bell? Thank you. There was one submitted, so I will go ahead and read that now, and then I'll open up the floor to public comments. Uh, so this was submitted by Peter G. Kalivis. Um, so PK, PGK dances film installation at Mission Valley Mall this Saturday, October 23rd, anytime between 6 and 9 p.m. includes hosted beverage and bites. In a donated storefront, our critically, critically acclaimed film, Deeply Rooted, is featured creative, creatively in the portal of the window display accompanied by images and descriptive text. The installation... Sorry. The installation has been looping 24 hours a day, seven days a week through October in a partnership with St. Petersburg Public Art Festival in Russia, who is hosting a similar installation of our film. These creative placemaking strategies fulfill our mission to make our art more accessible while creating paid opportunities for San Diego's best artists. Deeply Rooted is a creative collaboration between Junkyard Dance Crew Grupo de Danza Minerva Tapia and the PGK Dance Project under the creative direction of Peter G. Kalivas, founding PG, PGK Dance Director. Media Arts San Diego provided all the cinematography services and Matthew Taylor performs his original percussion score to support, support all the dancing throughout the 12 minute film. 
Deeply Rooted has been featured at the Hong Kong Dance Festival, the Los Angeles Dance Festival, and a live in-person version with music was performed on May 29th in San Isidro. Okay, now I will open up the floor. So to those members of the public in attendance, please click the button now to raise your hand and indicate that you would like to comment. I will enable, enable you to speak and send you a prompt to unmute yourself in order. When I call your name, please state your name for the record. You will have three minutes to provide comment after which we'll be placed on mute again. So Lynn, I'm going to unmute you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. You have Wonderful. three minutes. Thank you. Um, I'm Lynn Vasquez. I'm the senior grant writer at the New Children's Museum in downtown San Diego. And it's great to see everybody, even if you can't see me. <laughs> um, oops. Now you can hear my, my Star Trek uh, favorite ringer. Anyway, I want to tell you about three exciting things happening in the next weeks. Um, Wanted to also thank the city and each of you commissioners for your role in making these things possible, even as we're coming out of you know, a long closure. Um, as some of you may know, the museum reopened in May. Um, it's been slow but steady growth. Um, things are going pretty well. Um, tomorrow is Mass Creativity Day at the museum, something that went virtual for the last year but it is a free festival for families um, tomorrow from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. It's at the museum and in the adjoining park. It's free, did I say that already? Um, it's an annual celebration of creativity and uh, the culmination of seven workshops around the community, um, including Casa Familiar, um, Barrio Logan College Institute, the LGBT Center, um, as well as the libraries, City Heights, Weingart Library and Skyline Hills have groups um, that have participated. So hoping that people will come on down. Our second thing is Studio 200, Be the Art. This is our annual fundraising gala that takes place on November 6th. It's always fun. Um, and this year we're inviting guests to participate in the installations to climb around and explore, as well as other um, activities to be the art. Um, I'd like to hereby invite each of you to attend um, along with a guest. I will, I'll be sending an email to Bell a little bit later to pass on to you. You just need to email me back um, and we will welcome you. Um, the third and final thing is an opening of our next, our, our third artist in residency um, with David Israel Reynoso and his group Optica Moderna who have created um, an exciting new installations and an installation called Teatro Piñata. And this was kind of the theme used with the, the mass creativity worksheet, excuse me, workshops. And it is a theater type installation, lots of imagination. Um, and that's gonna be opening, I think the second week in November. So lots going on. We appreciate your support. Um, have a great day. Okay, that is Bell. That uh, would anyone else like to provide comment? And it looks like that's it. All right, very good. Thank you, and uh, thanks for people submitting public comment. Um, I'm going to switch up uh, the next part of the agenda just a little bit so that um, our guest. Uh, doesn't have to spend all day with us. Um, uh, as you know, we like to make space uh, available on our agendas for to hear from community members, and sometimes that includes performance. And I want to thank uh, Commissioner Smith for inviting our guest today, for having the idea, and inviting our guest today. And I'm going to ask her, um, would you please introduce our guest today, Rebecca? Oh, Absolutely. I'm sorry. All right, one other thing I wanted to note that Commissioner Bossler and Commissioner Frank have joined us. Go ahead. Awesome. Thank you, Chair Putre. So as you know, commissioners, um, one of the just great gifts of being in our region is the chance to hear from arts professionals like Peter Kalivas and Lynn Vasquez from our funded partners. And then every now and then we get to actually have someone share with a spoken word or a choral performance or whatever. And I'm just really, really excited um, to even in this Zoom room, 
introduce just somebody that is an up and coming, somebody who's definitely accomplished in his own right as a music educator. Um, and also I will say a community connector, um, a thinker and a performer. And so without further ado, just want to say, welcome everyone to Jonathan Seligman. Thank you, Rebecca, I appreciate that. Um, before I share this piece, um, I teach down in Chula Vista. I uh, teach at Casillas Elementary. I've been teaching there for seven years now, which it's mind boggling to think how long it's been. <laughs> but um, uh, back in 2017, my students had an amazing opportunity uh, to not just sing, but work with the Grammy Award winning band and San Diego native band Switchfoot. And they, uh, what happened was I was working, oh, they were working on a song called Float off their latest album back then. And I recorded my students, my visual performing arts director, Lauren Shelton. Um, she discovered I was a fanboy of two things, Switchfoot and Nintendo. <laughs> and so she decided that since Switchfoot works closely with the Save the Music Foundation, which works closely with um, Chula Vista, she pulled some strings and um, she had Switchfoot come and talk with me. And I showed them the video. They said, hey, we'd love to do a collaboration. And so in the May of 2017, they came to surprise my kids. They uh, snuck into an elementary school and uh, they brought cameras, whatnot, and they sang alongside my kids. One of my students started crying out of joy. It's like, oh my goodness, it's a rock star here with me. And then they invited my students, my promoting sixth graders to come on stage for their yearly um, concert called the Broam up in Moonlight Beach in Encinitas. So uh, unfortunately, they are, I could not have my students come to sing this for you. They would sound way better. But uh, as they're juniors now, which is, again, mind boggling. But I would like to sing for you the song that they sang on stage in front of thousands and thousands called Float by Switchfoot. So as I sing this, try to imagine prepubescent voice, voices singing beautifully. It's 
how we float. Yeah, feet ain't even touching the ground. It's how we float. Yeah, flying at the speed of sound. I'm in orbit like a jet pilot. Ain't no gravity to try to fight it. It's how we float. Yeah, we ain't never coming down. Jonathan, thank you so much. Commissioners, I don't know about you, but if I could have a musician start every one of my meetings singing, it's going to be all right, it's all right, and it's <laughs> yeah, let's go. Jonathan, you have performed in front of the Commission for Arts and Culture on October 22nd, 2021. We are so grateful for you, and if you ever need anything in the future, we are here for you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jonathan. That was really wonderful. I had not ever heard that song before. <laughs> and it was really great. And um, of course, thanks to Commissioner Smith for um, thinking of this and um, inviting you to come. Um, are you off to teach right now? I, uh, yes, I am between classes. I'm on my lunch break, so it is time for me to bounce. So <laughs> thank right. you very much for having me. Bye, Jonathan. And Janet, I'm going to send out the video of the students actually singing this song from a few years back. And yeah, you'll, you'll totally just be heartwarmed. So. Thank yeah, you. That'd be great. Thanks, All right. Hey, thanks a lot. Um, well done. Yeah. Well, what a drive to have to go back to meeting stuff. <laughs> Who's our next performer? Um, uh, okay, so back to um, our agenda. Um, thanks again, Rebecca. That was really great. Um, I'm going to invite Los Lobos next time. Uh, so next up is the um, commission meeting minutes from our September uh, meeting. So I hope everybody had a chance to take a look at those and um, like to know if somebody would make a motion to approve the minutes. I move to approve the minutes, Fritz. Commissioner Friedman, thank you. Do we have a second? A second. Thank you, Commissioner Jackson. Okay, any discussion on the minutes? Okay, um, do we have any public comment on the minutes, Bell? To those members of the public in attendance, please raise your hand now if you'd like to comment. Seeing none. Okay, um, since we have no public comment, I see uh, nobody asking to discuss. Let's go ahead. We have a motion and a second. Let's go ahead and vote. Uh, when I call your name, please respond out loud with yay, nay, or abstain. You don't have to have been at the meeting in order to vote or discuss. Okay, Commissioner Frank. Yay. Thank you. Commissioner Blevins. Uh, Commissioner Bossler. Yay. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Desenzo. Yay. Is that a yay? Commissioner Hughes. Yay. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Jackson. Yay. Thank you. Um, ah, my pages got mixed up. Commissioner Nuana, I'm not here. Commissioner Friedman. Yay. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Smith. Yay. Thank you. Commissioner Schoenbrunn. Yay. You and Commissioner Whipper. Yay. Thank you. And my vote is a yay. All righty. Um, see, what else is up? Um, oh, uh, before we move on to committee reports, um, I want to remind everybody that both the November and December uh, commission meetings are going to be one week ahead of the regular schedule because of the holidays. Um, Bell's already updated the calendar appointments to reflect that change, but I want to make sure you're all aware of it. So um, keep your eyes out for that those dates. Uh, so we'll be seeing each other in three weeks instead of four. Uh, also, this is the time of year that we start organizing committees for the coming year. Um, and of course, that's part of my job is to talk to you about what you're doing on your committees and what you're interested in uh, for the coming year. And then um, some of us are also waiting to hear from the Office of Boards and Commissions about appointments, reappointments, that sort of thing. So 
Hopefully I'll be able to bring back some information in the November meeting from the Office of Boards and Commission and we'll go from there. Um, let's see, Jonathan, were you, did you have a comment to make? I thought I saw. No, oh, ma'am. Okay. Alrighty, so committee reports. Is there any uh, public comment on this? To those members of the public in attendance, please raise your hand now if you'd like to comment. Seeing none. Great. Okay, uh, Commissioner Bossler, would you like to give us a report on policy and funding? Yes, absolutely. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm the chair of the policy and funding committee, and the committee did not have a meeting in September and we're not anticipating one in October either. Uh, staff will provide updates on arts and culture funding during the staff report section later in today's meeting. Come here. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Bossler. Um, next up is the Public Art Committee and um, we do have an action item. And um, before we do, uh, we, we need to do conflict of interest interest disclosures. So the recommendation affects contracts with M.R. Bernardis. I hope I pronounced that right. Please uh, assess if whether you have any conflicts to disclose. And when I call your name, uh, please state either no conflicts or what your conflict is. Uh, okay, Commissioner Frank. Unmute yourself. Yeah, yeah. Looking for the mute button. Okay. Uh, no conflicts, unfortunately. Although I love a good conflict. Uh, no, everybody knows that. Thank you so much, <laughs> uh, Commissioner Blevins. Okay, uh, Commissioner Bossler. <laughs> no. Uh, what is it? No comment. I mean, no conflicts. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner Desenzo. I have no conflicts. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Hughes. No conflicts. Thank you, Commissioner Jackson. No conflict. Thanks. Uh, Commissioner Friedman. No conflict. Thank you, Commissioner Smith. No conflict. Thanks, Commissioner Schoenbrunn. No conflict. Was that no conflicts? Exactly, no conflicts. Great, and Commissioner Whipper. No conflicts. No conflicts, right? <laughs> I'm sorry, all I heard was conflicts, so. No, none. Zero, okay, uh, and, and I have no conflicts. Mm. My, um, so um, since Ben couldn't be with us today, I'm going to ask Chuck if he will go ahead and share the proposal and recommendation. Um, I'll hand it off to Jason if, if you have those talking points. Okay. So uh, the Public Art Committee recommends that the executive director of the City of San Diego Commission for Arts and Culture accept the final artwork proposal by Mr. Barnadas in fulfillment of the City of San Diego's collecting mission, collection scope, and accession criteria. I'd like to call on Dr. Lara Bullock to provide an overview of the proposal and recommendation. Thank you, Commissioner Wooper. So, artist Imar Barnadas of Collective Magpie was commissioned to design, fabricate, transport, and install permanent public artwork um, that is site specific to the Civic Center um, Plaza in the Civic Center Concourse. And it is meant to visually activate the pedestrian walkway between the Evan Jones Parkade and the presently vacant commercial space that is in the downtown Civic Concourse. So this slide is just to remind you of the process that the artwork, the artwork review process. So um, we're at the ladder orange horizontal L that says artist creates final design. Okay, so just um, to visualize where the project is located, um, you see this bird's eye view of the Civic Center concourse. You can see the Civic Center Theater. 
King Chavez High School. Here is where the mural will be. Here's the Evan Jones Parkade. So just right um, along, it goes from A Street to the center of the Civic Center Concourse. And here are some photos, just you'll probably recognize these a little bit better. So um, the artwork is gonna go right where that street sign is, the A Street sign, that's the wall. Here's some other views of it right here. And so the primary goal um, of the artist was to create a mural in the Civic Center where all aspects are created through local participation to both reflect and inspire a representative and inclusive San Diego. So um, within the mural, the main themes are biodiversity, in other words, local nature, civic nature, and transformative possibilities with the help of youth imagination. So I'm gonna go through some slides just so you can see the imagery just uh, in the project, in the mural. Um, it's a pretty lengthy mural. So here's an overview and then I'll show you some details. I'll just kind of go through them fairly quickly. So all of the imagery in this mural was inspired by um, the community engagement effort that the artist made. Um, and these are direct representations of thoughts and memories shared by the public about their experience in San Diego. So um, one thing that is cool and that I wanna point out within the imagery is this kind of gold panel right here. These are literal memories and experiences shared by citizens of San Diego. Um, that were collected through a survey that she put out, um, what, that the artist put out in various ways. So that's kind of the crux. And then the imagery shows oceans, um, San Diego's, um, the importance of the ocean to San Diego, um, the diverse population that resides in San Diego, the importance of the tuna industry, the trolley, um, green space and um, San Diego's parks came up a lot um, in, in interacting with the public. Um, also, um, San Diego's relation to the border, which you can see kind of indicated here, these are actually grates in the wall, but they kind of also um, uh, are reminiscent of the border fence, the border wall. Another close up. And then another thing that came up a lot um, was just people commenting on housing positive and negative. Um, and so the artist has sort of um, has a positive message, a hopeful message that everyone will have be able to afford housing in San Diego in the future. And then this is just kind of a provocation um, to the passerby just to kind of reflect on what they want to remember about San Diego, what's important to them, what they care about. And then this is another, this is the, this part of the mural will face A Street. So it'll be kind of the thing that draws the viewer in to this space. And here's a little close up. You can see all the different figures that she's kind of um, working with um, for that inclusive message that she wants to get across for the project. And so just to remind you, um, so I mentioned that the artist engaged the community in various ways. So some of those ways were through artist in-person events. She actually had um, a residency where she was in residence um, right outside City Hall for several weeks every day um, to interact with the public. Um, she also had a participatory wall signage, which you see at the top right of this slide, a digital survey, a summer youth workshop, which she um, conducted with uh, King Chavez High School. And then in addition to that, um, she presented her preliminary artwork idea and somatic idea to the public art committee um, who gave her feedback um, as well as the final, um, this final rendition that you're viewing today. So just a reminder, this project is funded by the Public Art Fund. Um, and um, in terms of medium, it's gonna be a polytab parachute cloth medium. So this is a really cool medium because you can actually paint it as you can kind of see on the studio floor on the bot on the left. You can paint it on the ground and then you apply it with all of these different kind of polymers, mediums, and there will be um, a specific medium that um, mitigates graffiti as well. So with that, 
Um, we'll move on to the recommendation. Um, so the movement on the table is to recommend that the executive director of the commission accept the final artwork proposal by MR Bernadas in fulfillment of the city of San Diego's collecting mission, collection scope and accession criteria as established in section five, collecting mission, section six, scope of the collection and section 8.2, accession criteria of the collection management policy for the civic art collection. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Um, I dig it. Uh, okay. Um, we uh, have, uh, let's see, oh, we have an action item on this. Um, would somebody like to make a motion? Maybe somebody from public art? I moved. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Whopper. Uh, do I have a second, Commissioner Smith? Second. Thank you. Alrighty. Um, does uh, anybody have any comment to make or discussion about this particular piece? Everybody ready to vote? All right, then. Um, then I will uh, call on you and um, you will respond out loud after. Oh, Tracy, have a comment? I do <laughs> like, yeah, I have a comment. Um, I, I actually really love this piece, um, but you know, it was funny when I was trying to encourage people to participate in this, this discussion uh, with the artist, there was a couple of people who were like, oh great, another mural, you know? And I, I mean, I, I kind of was like, wow, you know, I, I love murals, I think they're amazing. And, you know, a lot of murals are very, uh, like single-minded messages, you know, they're they're talking about something very specific, where this one encapsulates so much of the San Diego lifestyle and culture and peoples that are here. And that, I mean, I really truly enjoyed this one. The, my favorite panel is probably the one with the wall and the seagulls like coming and going over the wall and the hole, you know, the big gap between the wall or the fence. Um, so I just, I really felt that that part was super meaningful. And then I did have a question, Laura, I'm not, I'm not totally getting, um, you know, I guess it's everything's up for interpretation, but I'm not getting the, the crow and the trolley with wings part. Did she talk about this at all? Like what that symbolizes? Cause I'm, I'm kind of, I've been staring at it for a while and I still don't really get it. Yeah, let's go back to, oh, I think, I don't know if the PowerPoint is being kind of glitchy. <laughs> um, so it's just kind of a poetic um, kind of combination of feedback. So just the trolley with wings or this one as well? The one that the it's like the trolley with wings and the the black crow are talking to each other in a in a way it's uh it's over the bees in the house yeah, yeah that that one oops you know I'm seeing if there's a close up image of it I guess it's not kind of or here it's, yeah so I think it's just so the trolley is kind of I mean she has lightly mentioned it but I think it's kind of like the trolley is a symbol like for the people, it brings people together. So the trolley is just kind of this character, I think that kind of meanders through the whole thing, just to kind of like as in a symbolic way. And then like the trolley in the ocean is communicating with the tuna, this trolley in the air is communicating with the crow. I think it's, it's just kind of like a playful poetic gesture. Um, but I, I don't want to, I don't want to speak for her any further, yeah. but yeah, there's no like cut and dry explanation. All right, cool. No, I, I mean, I, I like that too. I was just, that was the one part of the mural that I was like, huh, I don't really, you know, but I, I don't have to get everything right. Nobody has to get everything. That's what <laughs> art is all about. So, but yeah, I really enjoy this. And like I said, it's, it's really inclusive and it's really a good example of, of the, the communities that we have in San Diego. So I love it. Great. <laughs> all right. Thanks, Tracy. Uh, Tyler, I believe you um, had your hand up. I did, thank you. 
Um, uh, and Dr. Bullock, maybe you can you can speak to this. I I think this is a really extraordinary piece. It's really interesting, and it has that that San Diego vibe about it. But my question is, is it in a good place? I I actually walked that back when we used to have meetings in person, uh, and this is not advocating for ever going back to that. But um, I used to walk down this way a lot of the time when I you know would park on the street. But I do wonder if enough people are going to see it. I, I wonder if we have any kind of understanding of the um, the foot traffic that this gets, because this is a really oh, yeah. remarkable piece. And I, I'm curious if there if enough people are going to see it, especially in sort of a an overhanging next to the parking uh, parkade. Um, I'm just wondering if enough people are going to see it uh, that or if it deserves if no we can't find another location for it but uh i just want to make sure that it's actually being seen by enough of the public um to really have an impact um jonathan do you have your hand up to respond to that i do madam chair um so thank you for that question um <clears throat> just to put a, a little bit of background on this you may remember that we started working on this certainly pre-COVID, um, but it was an initiative that was um, put forth as we were moving into the Ash Street building. And the idea was um, a visual connectivity because of the volume of um, not just city employees, but also people who do business on a daily basis with the city would be traversing back and forth between honestly all three buildings, but in particular Cab and Ash Street. Um, for that short period of time that we were in Ash, um, we actually have the stats. Um, I don't know if any of the public art team can pull them up or Christine sometimes remembers data like this off the top of her head, but um, there, there's quite an active flow of pedestrian traffic through that area. And we actually, um, staff took the initiative to make sure that the corridor was um, painted, cleaned. Um, we um, made sure that new plantings were um, in there. And then um, we also um, made sure that the bow relief that extends all the way around the side of the parking garage and onto the cab was cleaned as well. So basically we were looking for some very simple um, enhancements and a level of placemaking to um, visually make that um, corridor more attractive and pleasant and to en enhance some of the connectivity. Um, obviously, we don't know at this point what the future is for the Ash Street building, um, but staff is comfortable with it, Tyler, because um, that parking garage is also, as you know, used by um, individuals going to Golden Hall and um, the Civic. So there is, um, you know, use 16 hours a day or so. So we feel like it does, it will have good um, impact, community impact. Just as a, a thought, and thank you for that, that's uh, great. Is there any planned lighting along there? I, it's been so long, I honestly just don't remember what the lighting is like there and will there be an opportunity to highlight this piece? So those going to the Civic uh, or Golden Hall in the evening time for events uh, will be able to see this lovely piece. I can speak to that. Um, it, it is really well lit. We have gone out and um, kind of made sure and taken photos. And so that that is something that's come up and that we are aware of. And um, yeah, we want to make sure people feel safe and that it's highlighted in the best way. So, so yes, the answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good question. All righty. Um, is there anybody else that would like to um, discuss this particular piece before we vote? Okay, I uh, also want to make note, Commissioner Nuana has joined us. Um, okay, so 
Um, so let's go ahead and vote. I will uh, call your name and you will respond out loud with yay, nay, or abstain. Uh, Commissioner Frank? My vote is nay. Thank you. Commissioner Blevins? Commissioner Bossler? Yay. Oh, yay. Uh, Commissioner DeSento? Yay. Thank you. Commissioner Hughes? An enthusiastic yay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Commissioner Jackson? Where'd she go? Uh, Commissioner Nwana? Yay. Thank you. Commissioner Friedman? Yay. Thank you. Commissioner Smith? Yay. Thank you. Commissioner Schoenbrunn? Doreen? Oh, yay. Thank you. Commissioner Whooper? Commissioner Whooper? Yay. Thank you. And my vote is a yay. Okay, great. Motion carries. Next up, uh, advocacy and outreach. Commissioner Hughes, do you have a report for your, us? I do. And actually, I, I had a question, um, if I may, before diving into my report. Uh, and this is more a procedural question for Jonathan. Um, I seem to remember in the, in the before times, in the long, long ago, we used to take a recommendation from a subcommittee as a motion from that committee and only be in need of a second. And this has come up a couple of times and as I've noted, and I was just wondering if uh, that was incorrect by uh, Robert's rules of order, or if we've just sort of decided, you know what, we want individuals to propose uh, going forward. So it was just a more of a um, administrative question. Oh, that's a really interesting question. I'm not actually familiar with that procedure. Um, I'm happy to look into it and come back with um, some information. I, I'd appreciate, I mean, it, it, and maybe um, Anne or Vernon, you guys have uh, better memories than I do. If that was your experience in the past, I just seem to have that, that memory stuck in the back of my noggin. I believe that um, we were, that was explained to us by uh, is it John Dwyer, uh, the attorney? I think that was explained okay. to us at one point that that the fact that an action item came from the committee that that in itself is a motion, um, and really only needs a second. Um, and I don't know how we got to the point of, you know, requesting a, a motion. Um, I don't know. I don't think it's bad, but. Uh, no. Jonathan, anything to add? No, I. Uh, that's actually really interesting. Um, I'd be happy to go back to John. Uh, firstly, I don't think it matters, but secondly, um, my experience with Robert's rules is, I, I understand what you're saying, Tyler, that by the, by the subcommittee placing it, requesting that it's placed, that is a recommendation, so you would only need a second. Um, let me go back to John and just ask for clarification. That's an interesting point. Happy to do so. Okay. I appreciate it. It's me being picune and dorky about these things, but I find them fascinating. Uh, so happy to dive into my report. Thanks. <laughs> um, Advocacy and Outreach did not have a meeting this month, but did have activities uh, that I took on myself, uh, including meeting with Jonathan and our friends over at the Movement Catalyst uh, team. They have done a really great job uh, meeting monthly with us, and we really appreciate all of their efforts uh, to get to know us and for us to get to know them. And they've been advocating out to their community uh, to the wider community about OSP and CCSD funding applications being due at the end of this month. So that's been really encouraging and we look forward to those monthly meetings. And uh, a big thank, thank you to Jonathan and to Matt of the Clear Rose Foundation for uh, fostering those discussions. Um, wanted to let everybody know also about the 
San Diego Regional Arts and Culture Coalition will be having an in-person town hall meeting uh, on the 17th of November. It's a morning event. I don't have the details of where and uh, exactly when in front of me, but I can certainly have that um, sent out to everybody as well as the County of San Diego. And this is really exciting. The County of San Diego, oh, thank you, Tracy. It's gonna be at the Mingay Museum. Uh, I believe it's 8.45 or 8.30 to 9.45 on November 17th. Um, the County of San Diego is holding a, oh, let's see, Tracy's on it, uh, a virtual town hall on October 27th to talk about the importance of arts and culture and the priorities, proposed priorities for their planned commission on arts and culture. So this is a county level event. So anybody who would like to contribute to that, I highly recommend I'll send um, Bell the announcement and we can send that out to everybody. Uh, but this is an opportunity to make our voices heard at the county level. And it's exciting that there is you know, going to be partnership at the county level going forward. Uh, and then also just a thank you to uh, Janet and to our um, friends over at uh, RAC, especially uh, to Jalug Smith about the, um, the California Arts Council. Uh, Janet and I had made some comments recently in support of a regranting proposal that then uh, members of the CIC came up with a different interpretation of the idea um, and it could have um, been less than optimal for rural areas. And then they went back to code and, and re-evaluated and happy to report that um, that re-granting is uh, going to be done in a very small way um, so that those areas of the city or of the state are not uh, adversely impacted. But uh, thank you to Janet and thank you to Jonathan, as well as to all the community members who uh, you know, rallied to the, the cry um, to reach out to the CAC. So uh, that's it on my end. Thank you all. Thank you, Tyler. Um, okay, um, let's see. Uh, next up, Commissioner Engagement. Uh, Commissioner Nwana, do you have a report for us? Hi, Janet. Hi, everyone. Again, apologies for my lateness teaching class. Um, I just have a short report. Um, as you guys know, our committee has been working on DEI statement. Um, we recently met, had a wonderful, fruitful meeting, really believe we are crafting something that the city would be proud of, that the commission would be proud of in yeah. order to really um, pay homage and be very inclusive and forward thinking in where we see ourselves going being a city of culture and arts. So uh, we will be presenting that, if I'm not mistaken, will be solidified at the next meeting in November, correct to Janet, if I'm up to time? I so. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, so we'll we'll be ready to unveil that and get everyone's feedback and support um, behind it. So that's what we've been up to. Otherwise, no other uh, activities due to lovely COVID, but hopefully we will be doing some more engaging activities soon under this task force. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, and uh, the discussions around the uh, DEI statement have just been really um, fulfilling to watch. Um, you know, trying not to be part of it too much, just uh, observing the work that's getting done. It's great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I do want to add um, a, a little special project because I just sometimes have to do things. And um, Fritz and I, um, are planning some field trips for commissioners um, so that we can get out and uh, meet some of the people that we're doing this for and some of the organizations get to see them. So um, we're working on a date, I believe it is, is it next week or the week after? Bell, I can't remember it's, the date. Yeah, it's next week on the Wednesday the 28th. Right. If you can join us, um, we're going to be going over to the Monarch School and um, getting a little tour and they have um, their new uh, arts um, and performance location we're going to get a look at and um, you probably know the Monarch School um, is the school that um, award winning school um, that focuses on uh, children who are experiencing homelessness so um, I'm real excited about it. Um, I'm 
hoping that some of you can come. Um, it's not uh, any kind of a mandatory thing, but we thought it'd be a way to be out um, meeting people who we are working for, in a sense, and um, and each other too, a little bit more personal than the Zoom. Um, it's been nice to have a couple of events to go to, the, uh, the one at the Shell for the um, World Design Center. Did I get that right? Capital, capital, world design capital. Um, it was really nice to be around people again. So um, keep your eyes open for the date. Belle's going to send it out. And if you can make it, we'd love to have you come with us on a field trip. We'll be planning some more. And I'm open for suggestions as well. All righty. Uh, next up is director report. And our director, Jonathan, where did you go? Oh, there you are. Jonathan, go ahead. Hi, Janet. Thank you. Um, much of the report I'm going to ask the team to weigh in on. Um, I'd like to just start by saying um, we have been hard at work with um, because of the reduced staff and because this is uh, the funding uh, application season, but we're moving things forward really well. Um, so I want to give a thanks and a shout out to the team. Uh, in particular, um, the FY23 application period closes on October 31st. Uh, we've had a number of workshops. Every city council office has hosted a workshop um, with us, uh, which has been really rewarding. Um, certainly potential new applicants at each of those. Uh, and then, excuse me, um, Last Saturday, we had uh, an in-person workshop uh, in the Encanto neighborhood uh, that introduced the program opportunities to a number of individual artists and small arts and cultural organizations in that part of the city as well. So we're feeling really good about outreach. Um, continues to be uh, a struggle though. So our friends at Claire Rose Foundation for example, um, are doing an additional push to uh, get information out in particular to the creative youth development space to make sure those practi practitioners are aware of, of the program. Um, the Performing Arts League is um, doing repeated pushes for us. Uh, and in the individual artist space, oh, to Tyler's point, Catalyst Movement is uh, getting the word out for us. So we're optimistic that we'll have uh, um, an expanded pool of applicants this year. Um, tonight is um, an event around poetry that I'm going to ask Christine to update you on and invite you to. Um, and um, if you are wondering if we, re we have received news about World Design Capital, we have not. Uh, so stay tuned, you will be one of the first to hear. Um, but back to programming, I wanna turn it over to Christine and the public art team to give you an update on what we're doing in that space. A lot is going on. Thanks, Jonathan. So, um, just to add a little bit to funding, just as a reminder, in addition to um, the funding applications being open, we do have a call for panelists that is still open. Um, the deadline for uh, those individuals that might be interested in being pan panel um, evaluators for the FY23 funding cycle, that um, application is on our website and the deadline is November 21st. Um, I'm happy to share the links, so please share it with your networks. Uh, we wanna try to have a, a robust pool of artists, cultural practitioners, arts field professionals from all kinds of disciplines and backgrounds. Um, and this is open not only to local, but also just we're casting a wide net in North America as well as Baja, California. Um, and then as far as uh, public art goes, um, as Jonathan mentioned, uh, we do have um, a poetry reading and open mic event. This is a culminating event for um, San Diego Poet Laureate Ron Salisbury's project that he's been working on for the last six months called San Diego Poetry of Resilience. 
So as um, a reminder, he's put out a new workshop every month um, and really um, cultivated um, a number of poets to submit poems, which um, have been kind of mapped. He has um, selected um, a number of poems, um, which will, he'll be announcing tonight, which will be incorporated into the San Diego Poetry Annual um, publication, which will, I think, be released in 2022. Um, so tonight they'll be, he'll be hosting it um, and along with his co-host Michael Clam, who uh, works for the Poetry Annual, um, they'll be having um, people uh, recite poems that were submitted as part of the project and then they'll facilitate an open mic for anybody else who joins and would like to share a poem. So that event happens tonight. There is a registration. I'll send you the link in the chat in just a second. That starts at 630 tonight and you just have to register um, via the, the Zoom link. Um, and then additionally, we have just um, started the installation process for Fallen Fruits Community Fruit Park. So as you might remember, this is one of the three projects of Here Comes the Neighborhood San Ysidro uh, Public Art Initiative. Um, so down in San Ysidro, Fallen Fruit is creating a fruit park um, with the concept um, of using fruit as a medium, which they do in all of their projects, and really is going to produce a a year-round um, activation and orchard um, in the San Cedro Community Park. So installation has begun. We're, we're partnering with uh, the Park and Recreation Department uh, to start to, to grade and really start to um, re, re, um, re, re, kind of rehabilitate that space in order to accommodate this park. And later on um, this fall, there'll be trees planted. So we anticipate that being installed by the end of the year. Um, so we're really excited about that. So more to come on that um, and opportunities to celebrate with some fruit down there. And then additionally, um, as just a reminder, um, uh, Commissioner Hughes mentioned that there is the state of the arts, health and wellness. Um, so again, the commission has partnered with Catalyst and Claire Rose Foundation to really explore arts and culture as a driver. Uh, and really creating healthy communities. So at one o'clock today, I believe, um, is the next one, which is about art education uh, and creative youth development. So if you're interested in that, I can share the link for that too. So you can just, um, I guess, uh, register right now and, and, and continue the conversation since it starts just in a little bit. Um, so those are some of our key updates for you today. Janet, um, that's all we have for staff report today. We look forward to more information in November. All right, thank you very much. Okay, everybody, um, we're getting toward the end here. Um, thank you, Christine, for posting that link. Uh, does anybody have, let's see, uh, new business for future agendas. Do we have any public comment on that, Bill? For those members of the public in attendance, please raise your hand now if you'd like to comment. Seeing none. Okie doke. Great. Um, anybody here have any uh, anything to add on that? All right, great. Um, and um, for our arts, culture, and creativity experiences that uh, we've had this month, um, I hope uh, everybody has something to share. I'm excited to share that I went to um, the opening of the Yolanda Lopez show over at the Museum of Contemporary Art downtown. And it was awesome. First of all, it was awesome to see a lot of friends there, including um, Carla and Leticia and Belle and um, uh, let's see, Christine was there, Jonathan was there. It was really great. And um, the show itself was great. So I recommend if you have time, to go down and check it out. Uh, and um, that is my creative experience. Anybody else? Jason. Yeah, I want to second that. It was a really cool exhibit. I don't know if I got invited to the opening. I went on Saturday. Um, maybe that was a little cooler because it was a little quieter, a little more intimate, but it was incredible to see her evolution and her process as an artist. Mm -hmm. from you know in college I suppose to as she got older and how her expressions changed and how she um, put that to the canvas so it was a really cool uh, exhibit I recommend everyone go see it 
I think there's a really sad backstory too. I think she passed away a few months ago. Yeah. Um, and obviously everyone wanted to get the exhibit going before she passed away, but due to COVID, um, there were issues with that. But it's definitely worth seeing. I encourage everyone to go do that. Yeah, I agree. Anybody else? Can you see me? Uh, no, I can't see you, but I can hear you. Well, I, may I share? Please. Thank you. So last night was the opening at UCSD of the new craft center. And it was extraordinary and so exciting. Um, I invite everybody to come down there. I've gotten involved and uh, the students are working uh, in a beautiful state-of-the-art um, studios on ceramics, jewelry, um, sculpture, and even surfboards. And uh, you might want to take a class, but you've got to go up and see this. And I saw the students in action last night. It was just so rewarding. And um, it, Pradeep uh, Kosla, the chancellor, really is trying to balance the, the campus out. It's my alma mater. And it's, it's so, so exciting. So um, please come and visit it. And they're, you know, welcoming, um, you know, everyone to come and tour it. It might be a place where we might want to think of having a meeting actually live. And they would uh, give us a room. They have a lot of rooms there that we could use uh, as a conference room. Well, thanks Doreen. You're welcome. Uh, anybody else? That's, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. And then Tracy. Okay. So I was just curious to know if, I mean, there's a, apparently there's all these great openings and these great shows. And uh, yeah, I just mentioned a minute, a minute ago that some people were not invited to this and they're invited to that. But I think it's really important for the commissioners to go to as many of these openings as possible. First of all, to raise the profile of the commission. Second, to really meet um, the people, you know, as Janet said earlier, for whom we are basically uh, working and supporting. Um, I think it's, it's a really strong statement when people know that the commission uh, will always support these various events. Um, and, you know, I think it's great that some of us go, but then some people don't even know about it. And uh, I think I, I would suspect that the people who are mounting these events, these openings and what have you, would be delighted to know that the commissioners would be happy to attend to support and to show their face. Um, and it's not just to socialize, because it's always fun to meet people. But I, I think a lot of our work is PR related. You know, it's getting out there, it's telling people what we're doing, what we're all about. We're here to serve you, and this is great, et cetera. What do you all think? Well, I agree um, that we should go to the uh, many, as many of these as we can. Um, I wasn't invited to this one. I saw an announcement about it on social media. That's, you know, and I was like, ooh, this sounds like fun, John, let's go. <laughs> it was free too, so that's a plus. And it was, a it was addressed to the whole community, the invitation um, from the museum. So uh, this wasn't one where we right. got to go because of the commission or anything. Well, um, I think it's not a bad idea. If, like if I get an invitation that is an opening, I think what I'm going to start doing, and I've kind of done it in the past for a couple of other things, is just send it to Bell. Let's say, Bell, this event is happening. Maybe some of the commissioners are going to want to, might be interested in attending. And that's how you get word out there. Mm -hmm. And maybe we all get on some sort of list eventually. You know, so, um, but anyway, I, I really think that the profile is enhanced if we're as many of us are at these events as possible. I agree. Tracy, you had a comment? Yeah, um, Fritz, I wholeheartedly agree. Um, I wish that I got more invites to things. I wish I got more invites to things that were free, <laughs> but, but I am 100% in your corner about getting out to as many openings and events and shows and just anything that we can. Um, that said, uh, Commissioner Hughes was very, very kind to invite me to a um, small local community uh, theater this month. And um, we went to the Patio Playhouse and saw a small production of When We Were Young and Afraid. And it was the first 
live theater experience that I've had since before COVID. And I was, I was so excited that I, I think I like tripped from my excitement and, and broke a sandal too. So I was like walking around with a taped sandal the whole time, but it was still, it was a delightful play. Um, I didn't cry. I thought I was going to cry, but I did not cry, but I did get a little bit of the, uh, you know, the feels about it. Um, but I, I really appreciated Tyler passing that information on to me and inviting me because, you know, like you said, there's, there's invites that we all get that, you know, not all of us know about. And um, I would certainly attend more if I knew what was going on. So I appreciate that comment, Fritz. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. I just want to say the La Jolla Playhouse does send out uh, invites. Uh, and if you're interested, I would call the Playhouse and tell them you're a commissioner and, and start going to some of their productions. Uh, I, I haven't really participated, but that is presented to me. It's the only one that I've really been invited for free. But I want to just add on one more thing. Uh, in Balboa Park, uh, a couple of weeks ago, there's patrons of the Prado. And I try to go to that every year because all of their proceeds go to the various museums and which supports, you know, ballet, theater, and all these wonderful things. And the children uh, put on a wonderful performance of uh, various different kinds of performances. And it was, it was terrific, but unfortunately you have to pay for that. Um, okay, Jonathan, you had your hand up. Yeah, I just wanted to um, underscore what, um, Fritz said, um, but also since a few of you are um, relatively new, pre-COVID, um, we had a reasonably good system of um, getting information out to you all through Bell or someone on staff like Bell. Um, there, over the last few years, um, organizations have diminished um, their hard copy invitations. Um, even when I arrived here three years ago, you all would receive huge stacks of invitations in the office that we would bring to meetings in a hard copy and give to you. We're not really getting those at the office now. Um, so candidly, it's been a little difficult for us to convey information to you. Uh, I personally don't even receive uh, invitations the way that I used to. But to your point, we are happy to facilitate and yes, send it to Belle. She'll get it out to you as expeditiously as possible. Um, I do know that we have um, an invitation out right now to um, the closing of um, the show that is currently at Diversionary, co-produced by Common Ground. Um, so we'll be sending information out about that uh, yet this afternoon if anyone is interested in going. That would be great. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, Tyler, something to add? Oh, <clears throat> sure. Um, well, uh, thank you, Tracy, for that. Um, uh, I was glad to have you as a as a partner in crime that evening, um, and wanted to advocate for uh, just talking about you know events that we are funding, um, or organizations we are funding. The uh, Organ Pavilion uh, does monthly concerts on Mondays, and uh, I had some friends visiting from Connecticut, and uh, we went to see one of those concerts, and it was fantastic. And uh, really, you know, they were impressed by all of Balboa Park. Uh, they were really blown away by it. Um, and they really, really enjoyed that. And the fact that, you know, we could be out on a fall evening watching uh, a live concert was something really special. And uh, just in terms of um, events, okay, I'll, I'll do a shameless plug. I got pulled into auditioning for a show and I'm actually going to be acting on stage again. Um, I'm going to be in a production of Clue, the, uh, the Parker Brothers game that is now a, a stage play. And I'll spoil it for y'all. I'm playing Mrs. Peacock. <laughs> <laughs> will you be shaving? I will be shaving. The 30th, I am shaving my beard. My chest hair is getting reduced. 
And uh, my dress is beautiful. It is gorgeous. All right. Um, we will need uh, photographs. <laughs> yes, so I'll, I'll send details to Belle, but I, you know, if anybody wants to come and uh, laugh at me getting slapped and dropped on the stage a few times, I'm sure it's something you've all wanted to do at some point anyway. So come and, and live vicariously. I, I will, uh, I'll, I'll try to take pictures when, I, when I'm there. I've already purchased tickets, so. <laughs> when, when was it, Tyler? What's the date? It's actually a long run. It's November oh. 5 through December 12th. Okay. So yeah, I guess. I'm not gonna miss it for anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited. All right, folks. Um, well, it sounds like we've completed our agenda. Uh, does anybody else have anything else to say before we go ahead and uh, adjourn for the month? All right. Well, I wish you all a happy Halloween, and uh, I'll see you in November. Have a great weekend, everybody. Thanks Bye. for coming, everybody. Bye. Bye, all.